everybody. Ming Tian here from blog.mingtian.com. Um, one of my recent articles was a more detailed look into black and white conversion options. Uh, this explosion of black and white photography, I guess, has come about thanks to plenty of interesting filters for iPhone apps, you know, plugins for your Photoshop software, and most recently, of course, we can't ignore the Leica M9 monochrome. Now, what I'd like to do today is give you a bit of a Photoshop demonstration, a live Photoshop demonstration of how I handle my black and white workflow. This wasn't something that uh, could easily be fitted into a text-based article, so uh, we're moving to a, a video review segment for this one. Um, hopefully it'll be the first of many. Uh, please let me know what you think in the comment box, drop me an email, you know, feedback is always great. So without further ado, to the PC. Okay, so what we've got here is a file from the regular Leica M9P and uh, 21F 3.4 Super Elma, the spherical thingy. Um, basically what I've done is opened the uncompressed DNG in regular Adobe Camera Raw. This is version 6.7, final release for CS 5.5. So I haven't made any corrections to the file as it stands. Uh, this is basically how it came out of the camera. Now, first things first, for me personally, I like to do, um, I like to just use a simple desaturation, use the saturation slider down here, just pull it all the way back, um, because it gives me a very linear conversion. It doesn't, it doesn't over punch the highlights and it doesn't bury the shadows. And I think that's very important because you want to have as much control as possible in how you convert your file. Now, I'm seeing my shadows in this region are a little bit blocked up, so I'm going to use the fill tool. Uh, but at the same time, this has now become a little bit flat. One of the neat things in Photoshop 5.5 is something called gradients. Press G on the keyboard. Uh, what I can do is actually add in a gradient. As you can see here, I want to bury my foreground, make it a little bit darker. Adjust the exposure. Put a bit more contrast into it. A bit less. Okay. Maybe a little bit of a vignette might work well with this file. Not too much though, as it starts to look unnatural. I think that's about as far as we're going to go in, for, in uh, camera roll, so we'll go ahead and open the image. Okay, we'll screen that. Um, first things first, I can see that the foreground area is a little bit blocked out and the background area is a little bit dark, so I'm going to use my dodge tool in this case for the mid-tones, make my brush a bit bigger, bring up the foreground a bit, bring up this back shadow area a bit, but at the same time the whole image looks a little bit flat because there's not a lot of tonal distinction. You can kind of see that there is some gradation here uh, due to the natural light, so what we can do is actually emphasize that by using the burn tool, and use the burn tool in shadows, very light pass, Basically, I'm not adding it or subtracting anything. I'm only emphasizing what's already what's already there. Okay. Along the corners. Okay. Next step, curves. So we go adjustments, curves. Get this pop-up dialog. Basically, what I'm going to do is put more contrast in. I yeah, you know, I think this has got great potential to be a low key image. You see, high key image looks a bit flat. I'm going to make it a low-key image, but what I need to do is preserve shadow detail as well as bring the highlights down a little. So the first curve is going to do that. It basically linearizes things, but also makes them darker. The second curve I apply to that, which is going to another curve layer, which is going to go on top of this, is going to put the contrast back in. Now, it requires a little bit of experience to see where to put the contrast in exactly and how much curve to use. But I, th I think that's, that's probably about right. Um, the, next thing, the next thing I need to do now is correct for the areas where basically the curve is punched up a bit too much or brought down a bit too much. So what I want to do is, my subject is obviously the wheelbarrow in this case, so I want to make sure that firstly the subject stands out, secondly we can tell it's a wheelbarrow, I see the handles, and, and thirdly you know, we don't lose too much of the background detail. So I'm going to go through the burn tool again in this case, uh, make sure you select the right layer, of course. I'm going to go through the burn tool, hit the surrounding areas around the wheelbarrow. The trick with editing is always never to overdo it. 
Um, the next thing I will do after that is go back to the highlight tool, the uh, dodge tool, sorry. Again, it's the mid-tone area which looks a bit odd. Pull back out the handle, pull back out the base of the wheelbarrow, pull back out some of the shadow detail in the back trees, this front tree. This front tree, actually, if you use too fat a brush, you can see what's happened here. Uh, there's a halo around the outside. So I'm going to undo that, use a smaller brush, and just pull out the detail on the inside of the trunk. You're probably wondering why I don't edit at 100% level. Um, and the reason is because you can actually overdo it and concentrate too much on one area of an image and it doesn't basically, you lose your, you lose your relative separation from the rest of the image. And that is not always a good thing because it means that you, you have to go back in again and fix everything else afterwards. Okay, so I, think we're pre I honestly think we're pretty much there with this image. Um, there is one small thing, and I am going to I am going to zoom in for this. I think we've lost a little bit of the contrast in this part of the wheelbarrow, so I'm going to very specifically burn that. But I need a small, precise brush to get back some of that detail. Okay. The one, the last, uh, the last step I do before saving is sharpening. But before that, I think for purposes of illustration, um, I'm going to put in a, I'm going to put in a sepia tone to this or a palladium tone to this. So I'm going to make a new layer on top of everything we've already seen. Um, I have custom colors in my palette. This one happens to be for sepia toning. Pick the gradient paint bucket tool. Fill it in. Okay, that doesn't look very good, does it? No, in fact, it actually looks, it actually looks black. And the reason for that is because we are in, should be in, RGB mode. Okay. The blending mode is very important. So for this, I'm going to use a screen. You can see instantly it's not actually black, even though it looks very, very dense. Um, but this is probably a little bit too much. What we can do, though, is pull back the opacity until we're happy with the density of your toning. That's a little bit too little, that's a little bit too much. So I think about 40%. 40% give or take is about right for this one. Now, go back to the original image layer. Final thing we do with this, I'm going to look at it at 100% again. And that's sharpening. Um, Sharpening is a whole other, I think, a whole other video segment in itself, but basically what I do have is a series of sharpening actions which I use, in this case I think number two, because that was formulated for the end cameras. Um, you can see the difference after and before. And we're done. Save it, and uh, we're all good to go. Well, I hope you all found that useful. Um, if you did, please let me know. If you didn't, please let me know. If there are things you'd, you'd like to see demonstrated better or improved in the future, also please let me know. Um, for the technically curious, this video was shot on a Nikon D800E with uh, the ME1 shotgun microphone. Uh, Carl Zeiss Distagon 28F2 Hollywood. Hollywood. Um, one of these guys, which is 85 1.4, and there was a little segment shot with the 45 Pancake. This has been Ming Tian for blog.mingtian.com. Hope you enjoyed it. Come back and visit soon. Thanks.